Raise your voice and and sing of your Caribbean pride. Sing it loud and strong. Fill our hearts be as one. Celebrate in song as we rise to heights where we. De 43e reguliere CARICOM staat over de vergadering waarbij de overdracht van het voorzitterschap zal plaatsvinden is cruciaal voor Suriname. In deze vierde editie van de Road to the 43rd Regular Meeting of the Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community brengen wij u een breedvoerig gesprek met uittredend voorzitter Johnny Brisenio, premier van Belize. De regeringsleider blikt terug op zijn periode als voorzitter en gaat daarnaast in op diverse uitdagingen. So PM, let's start by talking about your experiences over the last six months as the CARICOM chairman. I think this has been the fastest six months in my life um, as the chairman for CARICOM. Certainly it has been uh, an, an honor and a privilege for me to be the chairman for the past six months for, for CARICOM. And it was a quite busy six months. If we think very quickly, for almost two years nobody was traveling. And so everything was being doing was, was being done by Zoom. But now that we had the traveling, well, we had the first meeting, um, the summit, the heads when they came here in March. It was very successful. Two days where we talked about issues to, pertaining to, to the region, the issues of access to, to our local markets, to the regional markets, issues of the single market and economy, um, COVID, the economy, um, the issues of climate change and how we can access to, to financing. And right after, the following day then, we had a summit between um, CARICOM and, and SICA, something that has not taken place in, in 10 years. And so we were quite excited to, to have our colleagues from Central America to join us, and which they did. Also, we must remember that the Secretary General of the um, Antonio Guterres uh, from the United Nations was going to join us, but because of the crisis in Ukraine, they had a vote at, at the UN so he could not travel. But he joined us um, via the um, Zoom, and so did President Hernandez, the president of, um, of Argentina, who is the president of CELAC. So it was a big meeting that we had, and again, we agreed that both areas, both SICA and CARICOM, we want to find ways how we can work together. When you look at it, these two regions represent a market of over $400 billion and both regions are of the belief that if we can work together, we could access this, this market as opposed to have importations into, into the region. Um, we agree that we have to work on issues of, of climate change, climate resilience, climate ab adaptation, um, um, access to affordable financing. So um, we both agreed that the five C's from CARICOM and the um, CCAD, which is the uh, economic, um, sorry, the Environmental Commission from Central America, will be working together on, on many of these issues. We had several other meetings after that, of course. Um, we, we had um, a COVID-19 one-day forum um, that was hosted by um, President Joe Biden. And I was um, representing CARICOM and uh, gave a, a, a short presentation and it was from people all over the world, leaders from all over the world that, that participated. Uh, there's another important meeting that we had again with uh, Vice President Kamala Harris in, um, in April. And in that meeting again, we started discussing as to how the U.S. can be able to, to work closer with, with CARICOM. We, f we feel that over the years we've drifted and we have not had these direct communications with, with, um, with the United States. And Vice President um, Harris is of, well, her 
Her parents, her family originally come well, from, from, from the Caribbean, from Jamaica in particular. So she has this affinity, this connection to, to CARICOM. So she promised that she's going to take it on her own to be able to, to start to see how we can develop uh, access, for instance, access to vaccines, for instance. The issue of financing continue to come up. The issues of banking relationships that we have, the issues that we have. She again promised that she was going to work with us and then promised that we were going to meet again at the Summit of the Americas, which just took place a few days ago. And then we also asked that if we can have President Biden also meet with us. Another important meeting that we had was with, with Maxine Waters, Congresswoman Maxine Waters and her, her committee on, on financial services. Um, we met in uh, Barbados, um, President Mia Motley organized the meeting. And it's a full day intense of discussions of the challenges that small countries like us in CARICOM are having because of laws that were enacted by Congress in the United States against drug trafficking, money laundering, um, money for, for terrorism, for terrorist activities. Um, all laudable set of laws that were put in place uh, to control the, these illegal activities. But we have become collateral damage because the, the, the fines are so high that the banks, um, like Bank of America, for instance, and, and Chase, and all the other banks, felt that this, the little money that they would make doing business with Belize is not worth the risk. So what they have done is that they have severed that banking relations uh, with us, and it makes it so much more difficult for us to conduct business. It makes it more expensive, and it even takes longer. The other big meeting that we had of certainly was at the Summit of the Americas. It was a busy, busy three days. And again, CARICOM, we were very firm that we wanted a meeting with President Biden. And so President Biden um, did meet with us along with um, President, uh, Vice President Harris. And the importance of that meeting is that then they have agreed to set up um, three committees. One, to address the issue of access to affordable financing. The second one is to um, to address the issues of food security, and the third one was energy um, security. And so this committee was put up that is going to be made up of members from CARICOM, the Republican, um, the um, Dominican Republic, and the, the United States. For us, that's a big win because now we have direct access um, to the Vice President and the President of, of the um, United States. But also the Summit of America has also gave us another forum to be able to talk about the challenges that we face. Yes, we felt that the Summit of the Americas is a summit of inclusion. It's a summit based on, on geography, not a political ideology. So we felt that there should be inclusion of everyone. But also it gave us an opportunity again to bring the issues of climate change, the promises that, um, that were made to try to keep the temperatures to uh, below the 1.5 uh, degrees um, um, centigrade for it to, to, to go up. And um, we also felt that the $100 billion that they promised, that, they, um, that they're not living up to that commitment. And so we want to continue to push them to be able to, to get over. So all in all, it has been a successful six months, very difficult, lots of work. Um, but we were quite excited about the work that we did. Now, PM, you, you've already set the stage by highlighting some of the challenges faced by CARICOM, but from your experience and your point of view, um, what other challenges are you seeing um, for this region? Well, I think the, I'm quite hopeful. I'm, um, you know, I'm an optimist by, by, by nature, and I do believe that if CARICOM could continue to start to work closer, that a lot of what was signed on 50 years ago when CARICOM was, was first founded can be accomplished. Um, the issue of the single market that we were talking about, uh, removing the trade barriers that we have, some of our more developed countries in, 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 the, in the region um, sometimes put unnecessary barriers to act for us to be able to access um, these markets if we can remove that. We need to find a way how we can be integrated even closer. The issue of transportation and logistics continue to be a, a big problem and we need to be able to, to, to address that. Um, we know now that food security is, is a problem 
and I must commend uh, President Ali of um, Guyana, who in May had a very successful um, agri forum or for agricultural forum in Guyana, which I also attended as chairman. And so that we can then address these issues, issues of energy that continues to be a problem. Again, um, President of the, the Prime Minister from Trinidad and Tobago, Keith Rowley, also addressing those issues and see how they can access the the um, not not them the the, the oil the, the gas in the region and because of the problems that the United States have with um, with Venezuela you know and I'm saying well if we could access that we could address a lot of the the issues or the challenges that we have with um, on, on, on energy so I believe that we have a bright future. We just can, we need to continue to live up to, to to the whole principle or the vision that the founding fathers came up with when they set up our Caracom. Now, one of the things you spoke about at the summit of the Americas is regional and global unity. In that respect, then, um, what is the importance of Caricom on the global stage? Well, on the global stage, I think that if we can continue to to, to, to work together and to speak in one voice, then we can be listened to. Um, the good and a perfect example is the Summit of the Americas, that um, when we were there, we were not too sure if President Biden would have met. And we said, no, we, we want a meeting with President Biden. And so uh, we, we, we were thankful that um, Vice President um, Harris managed to find a little space where uh, President Biden could could come and to be able to to hear firsthand the the, the the challenges that we have and to see how is it that the United States can help us or how we can strengthen that important relationship that we have with them. And likewise, when we talk in other forums in the United Nations, um, for instance, we go to to Kigali next week. Um, the heads for for the Commonwealth of Nations we're going to meet. Um, it gives us a louder voice and to ensure that we are heard that the issues, again, climate change, we did not cause the problems in climate change, but we are paying the price. CARICOM is in the bullseye of climate change because of the hurricanes, more active hurricanes, more vicious hurricanes, um, droughts, winds, you know, and heavy rains when it should not be raining, flooding. So all of these issues, we are paying the price. And if we don't do anything, anything, uh, if we do not take action, um, some of our islands are going to disappear. In Belize, the low-lying areas, you know, are going to disappear because the waters keep keep rising. And we believe that the developed countries, they have a moral responsibility to help developing countries, small countries like us, to be able to prefer prefer to do take mitigation action, but that is limited then to be able to take the adaptation actions that are necessary for countries like Caracol. Now, six months, you said it's short PM. Um, your chairmanship is almost over and in July, you'll be handing over. Um, what are you looking forward to at the upcoming meeting? Well, certainly um, it's been a, a, a very intense um, six months was gratifying because we felt that we managed to get a lot of work done for the past six months. Um, president Santoki will take over as the president of, of Suriname. And whilst we were in Belize, we decided to set up another, um, what we called a quote unquote cabinet portfolio. And we put him responsible, responsible for industrial development. So we look forward to see what are his plans, what are his ideas when it comes to to that matter, but also it's going to be a continuation of the work that we have done. I have every confidence in uh, President Santoki. He he he's a very thoughtful man. I always observe him when when we are in meetings. He um, he listens you know attentively, and then and then whenever he talks, he's right on point. So I am confident that he's going to do a, 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 an excellent job, uh, probably even better than what we did. In, in, in Belize, so um, I, I, I congratulate him on this 
um, on his next six months that he's going to take over. And certainly I'm, I'll be here to help in any way that I can. I'll be more than happy to, to help him. I, I've gotten to know him over these past six months, um, I'm more now that we've, face, we've been meeting face to face and, uh, and I consider him a friend. So I, I wish him all the best and um, Belize is going to be with him and Sweden every step of the way. Premier Brisenio zal de hamer overdragen aan president Chandrika Prasad Santoki van Suriname. De rol van de nieuwe voorzitter zal eentje zijn om regionale leiders te stuwen in een richting van collectieve coöperatie. Suriname is er klaar voor. Tot de volgende aflevering. Raise your voice,